Hi, friends. I am Annie F. Downs. Let's read the Gospels. The Gospels are the first four books of the New Testament in the Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. These are the stories of Jesus Christ's life on earth, the friendships, the parables, the sacrifices, the meals, the miracles. Here's how this works. I'm going to read one chapter to you today. You can listen or read along in your own Bible. And then I'll mention the verse or idea that stood out to me, and then I'll pray, and that's it. So today is March 21st, and I'll be reading Luke 16 from the New International Version. Luke 16, Jesus told his disciples, there was a rich man whose manager was accused of wasting his possessions. So he called him in and asked him, what is this I hear about you? Give an account of your management because you cannot be manager any longer. The manager said to himself, what shall I do now? My master is taking away my job. I'm not strong enough to dig and I'm ashamed to beg. I know what I'll do so that when I lose my job here, people will welcome me into their houses. So he called in each one of his master's debtors. He asked the first, how much do you owe my master? 900 gallons of olive oil, he replied. The manager told him, take your bill, sit down quickly and make it 450. Then he asked the second, and how much do you owe? A thousand bushels of wheat, he replied. He told him, take your bill and make it 800. The master commended the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly. For the people of this world are more shrewd in dealing with their own kind than are the people of the light. I tell you, use worldly wealth to gain friends for yourself, so that when it is gone, you will be welcomed into eternal dwellings. Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much, and whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. So if you have not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches? And if you have not been trustworthy with someone else's property, who will give you property of your own? No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. The Pharisees who loved money heard all this and were sneering at Jesus. He said to them, You are the ones who justify yourselves in the eyes of others, but God knows your hearts. What people value highly is detestable in God's sight. The law and the prophets were proclaimed until John. Since that time, the good news of the kingdom of God is being preached, and everyone is forcing their way into it. It is easier for heaven and earth to disappear than for the least stroke of a pen to drop out of the law. Anyone who divorces his wife and marries another woman commits adultery, and the man who marries a divorced woman commits adultery. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. At his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus covered with sores and longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs came and licked his sores. The time came when the beggar died and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was in torment, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. So he called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, because I am in agony in this fire. But Abraham replied, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things, while Lazarus received bad things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. And besides all this, between us and you a great chasm has been set in place so that those who want to go from here to you cannot, nor can anyone cross over from there to us. He answered, Then I beg you, Father, send Lazarus to my family, for I have five brothers. Let him warn them, so that they will not also come to this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. No, Father Abraham, he said, But if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. He said to him, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. That is Luke 16 in the NIV. This is such an interesting chapter to me, you guys. Like, we could talk about every piece of it. But does the end of this chapter ever make you think of a Christmas carol? (laughs) It always makes me think of when Ebenezer Scrooge gets visited by the ghost because it's going to change his behavior. And that is just not how, I mean, that's what you hear Father Abraham saying this is, If the brothers of the dead man won't be changed by the word they already have, they won't be changed by someone visiting them from the dead either. And just reminds me again, I mean, there's a lot of interesting parts to this. And, um, but it reminds me again, the power of the word of God. Like we don't have to convince people of anything. In fact, I don't know that we can, but the word of God can change them. And what they have when they're talking about Moses and the prophets, they're talking about the old Testament that we also get to read and, 
and continued into the New Testament. And so we have the words that we need to change our lives. And and so that's what you're doing today by listening to it. That's what we're doing by reading it is being changed by the word. And so let's let's pray and just be thankful for that today. God, we thank you that your word is everlasting, that your scripture is true, that it does not change, that the same thing it, that was read a thousand years ago, 2000 years ago is what we get to read today. And um, those stories have not expired. And so we thank you for that. And we want to be changed by the word. We want to be changed by scripture. So do that in us today, God. Whatever stood out to us, would it cause a shift in who we are? We love you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.